I like to think that I have a healthy distrust of the FDA and governmental agencies in general. <laughs> and the FDA just came out with this past week, maybe two weeks ago, I don't know, very, very recently, the end of June, they have approved the sale of lab cultured meats. Oh, now you may be saying to yourself, Jessica, this is a pet podcast. <laughs> Why are we talking about this? Well, there could be some implications for pet food. We don't know yet. And that's why I decided to research this and figure it out, break it down for you so you know what I know, and to see if there are. Well, there may be in the future. I don't know. Implications for lab cultured meats and your pet's food. So let's dive into everything I found. Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Okay, lab cultured meats. Let's start with what is it? Well, the FDA has, in fact, let me share my screen for those of you watching the video. Okay, if you're listening, no worries. You're going to be able to understand everything. Uh, just for the video version, I'm going to actually have these websites up on the screen. Human food made with cultured animal cells. What is it? It says that, when it, so this is an older article from March of 2023, so it's a little outdated. June 2023, they have approved it. But what they're saying is that cell culture technology, the advancement is enabling food developers to use cells obtained from livestock, poultry, seafood, or other animals in the production of food. One thing I want to point out is this paragraph down here, which we're going to find out in just a little while. They're kind of two stepping back on this, but it says the FDA is continuing to work with firms that are developing food made from cultured animal cells to ensure the processes used to produce them are safe and lawful under the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. While it is a shared responsibility for the FDA and industry to ensure food is safe, it is the manufacturer's responsibility to ensure they are marketing food that meets all applicable FDA requirements. So what is the science of it? So apparently they start with a sample of cells from the tissue of an animal, uh, a process that they're saying is completely non-harmful and does not cause the death of the animal. They select some sample cells, they screen them, and then they make a bank of cells to store for use later. A small number of cells are then taken from that cell bank and placed in a tightly controlled and monitored environment that supports growth and cellular multiplication by supplying appropriate nutrients and other factors. What are the appropriate nutrients? Well, these are one of the questions I'm going to have later on in the episode. So after the cells have multiplied many times over into billions or trillions of cells, additional substances, for example, protein growth factors, new surfaces for cell attachment and additional nutrients are added to the controlled environment to enable the cells to, differ to differentiate into various cell types and assume characteristics of muscle, fat, or connective tissue cells. Once the cells have differentiated into the desired type, the cellular material can be harvested from the controlled environment and prepared using a conventional food processing and packaging methods. You can read all of this on the FDA's website. I will, of course, make sure to include links to everything in the show notes so you can go back and uh, read all of this at your leisure. The FDA's role in regulating human food made from cultured animal cells. This is 
Interesting. As described in the formal agreement, the FDA's approach to regulating products derived from cultured animal selves involves a thorough pre-market consultation process and inspection of records in facilities as applicable. So again, this was uh, posted on the FDA's website March of 2023. June 2023, the USDA approves first ever cell cultivated meat for two different American manufacturers. So ABC News article, lab-grown chicken meat is getting closer to restaurant menus and stores. This was back in April where they are talking about all of the lab-grown meats in production. There are two different productions. One of them is Upside Foods that I have found in this particular article. And then... June 22nd, USDA approves first ever cell cultivated meat for two American manufacturers. Again, ABC News article. So uh, a California-based manufacturer, Upside Foods, which we just mentioned, actually gave access to ABC uh, the, to the facilities, showing them how it's all done. Good Meat is the other company that is also now allowed to produce and sell lab cultivated, it looks like chicken is what they are going to be selling. So let's take a look at the actual FDA approval. So the FDA's website, there is human food made with cultured animal cells inventory, updated June 2023. There are two different foods listed. Both are cultured chicken cell material. One of them is from Good Meat, Inc. And one of them is from Upside Foods. So now I understand this is a lot of running around trying to figure out what is actually going on. I am going to, in just a moment, share with you who actually owns these two companies. Let's dig into that a little bit. And then we're going to talk about what are the possible implications for the pet food industry. Today's episode is brought to you by the Furry Family Coach Dog Training. Train your dog in the comfort of your own home and on your schedule with video instruction from me. Learn the foundations of training, teach basic cues to your dog, and explore solutions to behavioral issues all inside of this video-based online training course. Go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to see you on the inside. All right, we are back. So as I just mentioned, there are two companies the FDA has approved, Upside Foods and Good Meat Inc., for selling cultured chicken cell material as food in the United States. There was one other statement in an ABC News article that I wanted to share with you. It says, In the last five months, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has cleared two American producers of lab-grown meat to bring their products to market, finding no questions about the company's claims the protein is safe for human consumption, though critics still have concerns about the industry's financial viability relative to long-term output. Regulators from the U.S. Department of Agriculture are now deciding how to label cultivated meat for public sale and inspect facilities that produce it. The guidelines are expected sometime this year, a final hurdle before the products can hit store shelves. So we're not quite there yet, but they have gotten their approval. So let's look into these two companies and see who owns them. So, of course, Google is our friend here. Who owns Good Meat Incorporated? Well, Good Meat Incorporated is owned by Eat Just. Eat Just is a company who is already bringing you Just Egg, which you may see in the egg case at your local grocery store. It is um, manufactured egg product. They are not real eggs from real chickens. So let's take it just a step further and find out who owns Eat 
Just. Well, Eat Just is a private company headquartered in San Francisco. It has plant-based alternatives, which we just talked about, the eggs uh, that you might have seen in the egg case at your local grocery store. It was founded in 2011 by Josh Tetrick and Josh Balick. So there are currently 44 investors in Eat Just. The most recent ones are the U.S. Department of Agriculture and C2 Capital Partners. So in addition to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, there are a lot of investment companies, and we can go down the rabbit hole of these investment companies, um, but I think it would be better to switch to looking at who owns Upside Foods because it seems like they're kind of the leader in this race right now. So Upside Foods is owned by Uma Valetti. They are funded by 41 different investors, which again, we can see here, uh, all of the investors on Crunchbase. The U.S. Department of Agriculture is their lead investor. Again, a lot of management groups. <clears throat> Here's a big one, Bill Gates. In addition, to Bill Gates, Tyson Foods is a big investor. So these are two, two that I have a lot of questions about. First and foremost, not a fan, not a fan that Bill Gates is an investor. Um, he was an investor of Beyond Meats, if you remember how big Beyond Meats were for a number of years, but I think it was back in 2019, he's finally sold the, the last of his uh, steak in Beyond Meat. It wasn't doing well. And he has now invested in Upside Foods. This is what I have found as far as these two companies who currently have approval now. Of course, there are still things being, being uh, figured out, but yes, that is, that's a big one for me. That's a big red flag for me that Bill Gates is involved in funding Upside Foods. So really quickly, before we get into the potential implications, because at this point, it's all speculation about what this may mean for the pet food industry moving forward. I am going to share with you Susan Thixton's thoughts because she is, of course, uh, a huge huge consumer advocate in the pet food space. But before I share that with you, I wanted to give you my thoughts on what I have found thus far on these lab cultured cells that they have now approved. Um, and will probably, I don't know, the end of 2023, maybe sometime in 2024, I think we'll probably start seeing them first in restaurants. Um, and then they will wind up on store shelves. My, my concerns are this one, if we're getting them in restaurants, what is the, what is going to be the implication for the restaurant disclosing if it is or is not lab grown meat? That's my first question, because I think it's probably going to wind up in restaurants first are they going to be required as an, you know, an individual restaurant to disclose to the consumer that they are purchasing lab grown meat versus an animal that was naturally produced and born, reared, raised, um, whether that was, you know, we already know we don't have disclosure on if it's a factory farmed animal or, you know, if it is uh, um, produced on a regenerative farm, that's something people want to boast about and brag about. So we might know about that, but we're not, we're not being told like where these animals are actually coming from. You know, obviously on a restaurant menu, we're just seeing chicken or beef or whatever it is. And will that disclosure be required? That's a big question I have. Another question I have, and we <laughs> we talked about this when I was showing you on the FDA's website, you know, the FDA is basically saying we're leaving it up to the manufacturer to make sure that this is on the up and up and safe 
for human consumption, blah, 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 all the things. The FDA is kind of passing the buck to the manufacturer to make sure all of this is up to snuff and up to par, right, with FDA requirements for human food consumption. Now, we know, we know that the FDA um, does not have a great regulation, doesn't really enforce regulation with pet food. And this is just one more thing. Is the FDA going to have the money, the uh, people, the actual like labor to do the work to regulate this industry on top of what they already have? That's a big question for me. I would say probably not. Another question I have is, you know, we know that a chicken a hundred years ago and a chicken today have very different nutrient profiles because of how they're raised, because of what they're eating, because of the exposure to nature and the toxins in our environment that we have now that we didn't have 100, 200, 1,000 years ago. Very different nutrient profiles in that meat. What's the nutrient profile going to be like in lab cultured meats? Of course, I read to you that nutrients are being added in the process when we read how lab cultured meats are actually produced, how they're made, well, what are these nutrients? What is the nutrient profile ending up as? Is it synthetic nutrients? Are they, you know, I, I mean, I can't imagine they're adding whole food nutrients to a lab grown uh, a cell. How would that work? How are they ingesting and digesting and actually pulling the nutrition? It would have to be synthetic nutrients, right? I, these are questions that I have, not just for me as a human who may wind up consuming this product unknowingly, because at this point, I certainly wouldn't intentionally choose it. What, I mean, there are so many questions that have not been answered on the FDA's website about what this product actually means even for human consumption, we haven't gotten to pet consumption yet because that's going to be obviously a, a, a whole other ball game. Just for human consumption, this is this is dangerous, especially when I see a Bill Gates on the list of donors to these projects. These are huge concerns that I have. Um, so what is the nutrient pro profile going to be? That nutrition, is it all synthetic? I mean, this is not a living, breathing animal that was born of nature. So it's not eating food to address the nutrient profile of the meat after the animal is slaughtered. So what kind of nutrition is this actually going to be? Those are some of the big concerns I have, right? Now, if we turn around and look at Susan Thixton's article, which I will, for the, those of you watching the video, share on the screen with you, will pet food include the byproducts of lab-grown meat? And what the heck are the, the byproducts of lab-grown meat? I don't know. So Susan is saying the approval letter to Upside Foods did not state the FDA itself determined cultured chicken was safe for human consumption. It was actually quite vague. Instead, the agency took a non-committal stance, careful to put full responsibility to food safety on the manufacturer of these products. The FDA letter was very clear in its approval letter, clarifying that label disclosure of bioengineered material in human food is required. How is that going to trickle down, as I've already asked? And we know, we know that disclosure of how these meats are obtained, what condition they are in, are they uh, diseased, did the animal die other than by slaughter, these things are not disclosed on pet food labels. So will lab-grown chicken be disclosed in pet food? Well, will it even be used in pet food? At the moment, it seems like it's going to be too expensive. But on down the road, 
there will be a concern. Now, the byproducts of the production could potentially be an immediate concern. So as Susan Thixton writes, the pet food, uh, I'm sorry, pet food is commonly used as a dumping ground for food waste permitted by FDA with no disclosure to consumers. The federal regulations that require disclosure of bioengineered foods on labels is specifically for human foods. They would not apply to pet foods. Currently, slaughter waste, dead animal disposal, brewery waste, used restaurant grease, expired food waste, and more is disposed of into pet food, animal foods, with no label disclosure. These ingredients are hidden behind a generic ingredient name to prevent transparency. We are concerned that as other industries do, the cell cultured the cultured cell industry will see pet food as the perfect dumping ground for their byproducts. And as with so many other waste ingredients, the pet food consumer will not be informed. So of course, because she is our advocate, Susan has sent a letter with these questions to the FDA. Will she hear? We don't know. Um, there's not a great track record of it. But these are some pretty, pretty serious questions for both us as humans um, consuming animal products, but also for our pets now and in the future. So what do you think? What have you heard? Do you know something more that I have not yet found from the FDA or uh, any research into who actually funds what's going on in these companies? Uh, because that is a huge indication, uh, generally <laughs> speaking, of the end goal of some of these companies. We know that uh, Bill Gates does not want us eating meat. We know that he wants the human population to drastically reduce. We, we know that he has been very vocal in these statements. And um, so when he puts money behind something, it's not generally for the good of the human race. Uh, so it, it, stands to reason that we would have a lot of questions and I do have a lot of questions and I want to know what your questions are. So I will put a post up on Instagram today asking you what your questions are about these lab cultured cells. And I want to know what your, what questions you have and we'll see if we can figure it out together with that. Um, you know what? I don't want to end on all doom and gloom because you know what? That's a horrible, horrible way to end. Let's end on a happy note. Okay. For those of you watching the video, you are in luck. You will still be able to hear it on the podcast episode, <laughs> but y'all know how much dogs love cheese. And there has been a trend going around TikTok on the cheese tax that our dogs require us to pay anytime we cook with cheese. So here is a cute, cute video <laughs> and the cheese tax song. Here we go. Cheese tax, the cheese tax. You gotta pay the cheese tax every time you're cooking. When the cheese comes out, this puppy comes looking. The rules are the rules and the facts are the facts. And when the cheese drawer opens, you gotta pay the tax. The cheese tax, the cheese tax. Hand it over quick or things might get ugly. I can get really loud. I'm a really barky puppy. I'm not just asking cause I'm looking for snacks. This is real important business and you gotta pay the tax. The cheese tax, the cheese tax, the cheese <laughs> absolutely adorable all right guys y'all have a great rest of your week make sure to follow me on instagram and answer those questions when i post in my stories about what questions you have for cell um, lab cultured cells of meats oh my goodness this is this is craziness. What is happening in the world? Give your pets some extra love from me today, and I will talk to you again next week. Ow, ow.